So I have to admit that I was a bit anxious about speaking to you because I'm not used uh, to speak to such large rooms. I was at TEDx last year and it was uh, really a challenge for me. I'm used to play games actually <laughs> with kids and learn by playing games. It's, um, it's fun and um, I propose to you to not do the uh, usual presentation and start with questions. So please put your questions on Slido because I would like to leave my slides for the end in case we need them. And start with your questions because I really believe that learning, learning is, a, is a dialogue and we have to have conversations. Um, also we have to, to play games and have fun, and I would really like to start this conversation with you right now. So, um, in order for you to ask me some questions, maybe you would like to know more about me than uh, what Powell said. And um, what I can tell you is that I love communities. Uh, I love communities because I learn a lot in this uh, kind of environment. I'm not really... Uh, keen on speaking about me. That's why I have this video that somebody made about me and I'm gonna let you watch it. Is the sound working? So hope the internet will help us. Uh, meanwhile, uh, I can tell you that I have like uh, 100 t-shirts at home from the communities I've been involved internationally and locally. The sound doesn't work. Can, can somebody help me? Uh, I think we just have to plug it. One second. Uh, it is. Uh, this is it. Ah. Okay. Can, can you cut the sound? We're, we're going to plug in. Thanks. This is my story. I grew up in Romania, in a small city on the Danube. I'm a junior developer and an entrepreneur. When I first started to look to learn how to code, I took some uh, courses online, but it was not enough. And I found this Simplon program in Paris. It's uh, like a dev boot camp for people who want to become programmers, developers. And Microsoft is uh, helping with the license and technology. The first time of my life I felt my brain was uh, like stretching very, very hard and that felt amazing. I was hoping that I will find a job that I will like after my studies. Actually, it didn't happen like this. And in the end, I said, I'm going to do something on my own. I've discovered myself and what I want to do there. I had the help of people to do that, and I would like to bring this to Romania and help others find their path also. Romania is its a very interesting place to be now. We are just... 20 some years from the revolution and everything is moving so fast. Cluj is really a young city, very dynamic, very active. There are lots of young people with ideas. My role now is to show these people all the opportunities that they have and they can create with technology to offer the free training to people who need it to be able to program and use their talent. I'm planning the uh, workshops, I'm doing presentations. I love my job. <laughs> I couldn't do anything else. I have lots of energy. I don't know if I will have it forever, but now I want to use it for helping people. That's my agenda. And having more people thinking like me and companies like Microsoft having the same agenda um, that makes you feel very empowered, that makes you feel that you are doing the right thing, and that's awesome. I don't think I'm saving the world, but I'm trying to empower people to do it.
So that's a bit about me. And I really like that you also have questions already. So now we can start. We can start talking about collaborative learning. Why is this important? Why is collaborative learning important? Um, I think that it's very important uh, today, more important than yesterday. It was always important to learn and to have communities to rely on each other. But today we are a lot speaking about AI. And we will rely on computers, we will rely on robots, and sometimes we are not able to rely on each other. And I think it's more important than before to be able to rely on each other to learn more, to learn more about how we can impact the future through our technologies and through our activities. Uh, that's why we are going to speak about collaborative learning, and you are going to help me with your questions. So I saw that the first, there was a question about uh, what you can say to us about um, teaching to adults from teaching to kids. Well, I can tell you that kids just want to have fun. And if you are uh, boring, they will tell you immediately. You have three seconds to get the, attentions, the, te the attention of kids. Um, I can say that the average time they give to you is 15 minutes. So 15 minutes maximum you can get with them um, with being boring and trying to speak to them about, you know, coding in Scratch and JavaScript, because we're doing all this. We're doing with kids from eight years old. And uh, what I've learned is that uh, actually adults want just more of that. And the fact is that the way we are learning today and the way we are uh, experiencing learning today is just not fun. And we are used to sit in the chair and wait for somebody to speak to us about things instead of just doing it in a different way. And I think you today, you should think about how you can do this learning experience differently than sitting here in the chair. And for the organizers of JavaScript uh, conference that I really admire and I appreciate, I'm very happy to be here today, I would um, suggest that next year you do small groups of people learning in different, uh, in different ways. I know it's cool to have 400 people in one room, but there is another kind of interaction that would generate uh, through small groups and conversations. So um, how all this teaching kids started was just out of curiosity. Um, all my path through programming and uh, tech world was out of curiosity. So I'm some, I think that you can, if you are curious about learning things, you just cannot stop. You, you, um, transcend the borders of every field. Um, I cannot, for example, describe what I am actually doing today to my father, and it's really hard for me to have this conversation with my family and in general with people, because I like doing a lot of things. I actually like learning about things. So what, everything that I do is about learning. Even being here today is about learning from you and how, how what, um, conversation about collaborative learning would happen with this virtual panel and my, uh, my presentation that I thought about at home that would not fit to all your questions. So there were other questions like uh, thinking about AI, uh, if I can think in some point kids will start to teach kids. Well, uh, that is uh, the main question I have for you today about collaborative learning, because I think I cannot, I cannot speak more than what you can find on Google if you tap collaborative learning or um, formats or methods and tools to do this. But I can uh, probably uh, talk about hours uh, regarding the future of collaborative learning and the future of the way we are learning and teaching kids. And what's amazing from uh, what, uh, what I see at kids and uh, digital kids courses is that so kids take notes with their cameras. Um, kids, um, kids learn by doing vlog, uh, vlogging on YouTube. So they spend, I have this kid which is, uh, he's 10 years old and he spends, um, 80% of his free time doing uh, videos for his uh, vlogging, um, his 
channel on YouTube. And he's so proud of having 200 subscribers. Like, for him, is this huge, huge achievement that he has 200 subscribers. And how he does is, it is I, I asked him, so, um, wh why do you do this? And I said, because it's so fun. Like, I, I, I don't like playing games. What, uh, what my colleagues do, they play games in their free time or even when they should do their uh, w homeworks. Um, I uh, like um, video and video, video editing and I can have some adventures with my friends because, you know, my parents don't actually go, let me go to the mall alone, but if I tell them that I'm going to do a vlog about it, they will let me go with my with my. Uh, Teammates. So he takes this gang of four guys. Uh, he he's um, he's very. Uh, you can find the, his link on our page, uh, Facebook page. Uh, we are promoting our kids actually, our kids channels. Um, he takes his gang and he goes to the mall. And in the in the way there, he's filming uh, short. Uh, short parts of the, what they are, who they are meeting, what is happening in the street, how cool Cluj is. He was to telling me a, a few days ago that there is this church with a great view from the tower and today after the course he will go there and he will uh, film it from this angle because he never thought about it but now it striked him. It's incredible how kids are learning today. So uh, when parents come to me and say, he's staying like four hours watching a YouTube video, I don't get it. He's learning or she's learning. They are learning through videos. So we have to adapt also the content. I think kids will teach kids. We cannot teach kids anymore. And I think we have to be prepared for this and we have to learn. Probably we have to unlearn about the way we learned and the way that kids will learn. Let's see other questions. Um, technologies, what technologies do you use to teach kids to code? So we started, um, we started with uh, Scratch, like everyone. Uh, we started with Coder Dojo movement, which is huge international uh, movement. Everyone uh, is very, very engaged in teaching kids. Um, I hope I will not t uh, tell you only about the uh, kids, but if you have other questions, I'm glad to take them. So we started with Scratch and then we, we realized that kids are getting bored of Scratch very fast. They were getting so good at it that we had to prepare and most of them wanted to see real code. And Scratch at that time didn't allow them to see the code. Um, uh, Scratch is working with the blocks of code. I don't know, probably you've heard of Blockly. Um, and um, it's like a puzzle and they put the blocks of code together uh, to make games in Scratch. Behind there is the JavaScript code that today we can see and there are many other platforms that kids can also see the code while putting the blocks and getting the result. One thing that is very important for the kids, and I think it will also work for adults, because grandparents of kids tell us that they've started learning to code because of their grandnephews, uh, grandchildren. Uh, uh, so um, they are attracted by games. Uh, there is this um, learning uh, JavaScript with Minecraft, um, and many, many platforms that are um, built in uh, immersed environments where kids go into this temple and they have to solve challenges uh, while, uh, while they are writing code lines to get to uh, a sp uh, another to a place in the game. So it's an interactive way. It also attracts adults. Uh, we actually use more than 20 platforms today. Um, so if you want to know more about them, uh, we can speak after. Uh, also, what I've learned uh, from this teaching kids and teaching adults is that um, we have to really unlearn everything about uh, what we know. Uh, I had these adults, at the first time I did the Simplon boot camp in Romania, um, it was a really hard experience and deceiving experience for me and it was one of the failure, let's say, uh, on my list that I couldn't, I couldn't teach 
adults how to code. Um, it was because uh, these people were coming to our trainings, so they, they, they got into the boot camp, which was supposed to be a, a six-month intensive program, um, but they were not really knowing what was expecting, expected from them. And when they came, they were like at the university, you know, I came here, so I sit on my chair, and somebody's going to teach me how to code. And that was never going to happen. And it was very deceiving for me and for them in the same time, but it was such a big frustration that made some people become uh, Ruby heroes, not JS heroes. I'm very proud of them uh, coding today and doing awesome apps, uh, useful products that are helping people. Um, let's see other questions. Uh, how was Simplon experience for me? Uh, besides deceiving, um, how di does this, uh, this influence my work today? Um, besides being deceiving, it was an experience of uh, getting well with uh, failing in um, my trials of learning people about different things. Um, I, I became more relaxed about the things not going the way I wanted. Um, I became uh, really uh, okay with community being the curricula. So at the beginning I had this awesome curricula. Um, for people everything was logical, in, uh, like I experienced, it was very helpful for them. They were non-technical people, uh, be aware, so they were people unemployed, uh, coming from arts, music, geography, learning uh, how to code. And we had to learn them the basics. So we, we, had, we needed this framework, the structure. We needed the, uh, the structure that would help them. But this didn't work. Even if we worked on it for years and it worked in France, it didn't work in Romania. And I've learned that actually the community, you today, you can be a curricula, you can be the framework that is needed for uh, a new kind of JavaScript school. Um, I think this is something that I really learned from the Simplon experience and also from uh, another community that I've built and I will talk later. This is the Rails community. Uh, uh, when I came to Cluj, I really wanted to have Rails girls in, uh, in Cluj. But besides the Rails Girls workshops that happen once a year, and it's about a weekend where girls from any field or any age, we even have high school um, people, we have moms, we have pregnant women coming to learn Rails, to do their projects. Uh, besides this, there is a community. So the trainers that are coming to teach girls, uh, they meet up every month and they speak about their problems. Last, last month, a colleague of mine was telling me that he had his app hacked and uh, he was at the meetup, so all the guys were getting together and trying to solve his problem uh, because that was the emergency and that was the thing that uh, made them learn the most uh, during that meeting. So the Rails, uh, Rails Girls just started as an event we had the framework, which was uh, online, um, a community that was spread worldwide, put the main things that you need for the workshop, for how to make this, this happen, even how to get the money from the sponsors. So we had all the framework, we just had to make it happen in Cluj. So uh, again, uh, we posted uh, something on Facebook, like who wants to be a mentor? Uh, people got in on Twitter, we started uh, to be retweeted, to get retweets from the international communities, and even people from other countries were willing to come to the workshop in Cluj just to have fun during one weekend because it was the, uh, the greatest experience for them. Um, many people travel through these kind of communities. They are traveling and learning in the same time. It's another lifestyle, um, which I highly recommend to you. Um, what I think that communi uh, learning communities um, should uh, mind before, b besides having fun, like I said at the beginning, is really support each other and make sure that there are engaging interactions. So not like me speaking now to you, boring, boring, some, some people are not even listening. Try to have more engaging conversations and dialogues. So, um, 
Other, other things that are important is that uh, nobody is a teacher. I, I should, um, if I am here, uh, anybody from the, from the room can come on stage and teach something. I am sure that you all have something to, to tell uh, to the others that is interesting about what you are doing. And I'm sure you can be a GS hero uh, next year here on stage. Um, Romania, ha I will take another question. Romania has the best percentage of women in STEM fields. What's the secret of Romania? Communism? Uh, fortunately, unfortunately, I don't know. Uh, but I'm very happy to be, uh, to be here and to see girls in the room. Usually, I am the only girl uh, at the tech conferences. So <laughs> when, I, when I go in other countries, I'm really the only woman in the room. I'm the special guest on the feminine list. Uh, so another question was, is the best way for self-development from a developer point of view uh, to be part of a collaborative uh, learning communities, a community, I guess, is the question. Uh, I, I think um, you develop yourself and you grow when, when you learn already. So you need nothing else than learning to develop yourself. That's the purpose in itself. And uh, co collaborative learning communities have this shared purpose, which is, first of all, to learn, and second of all, to have fun. I think these two are the secret sauce for every uh, learning community. How can you kickstart an AI uh, learning program for kids? How do you explain complex concepts to kids? Can you give us an example? Ha! <laughs> um, it's very... It's, um, to kickstart a, prog a learning program for kids, um, I think uh, you need people interested in this. So you can find them um, either by doing a meetup on this topic, and people will join, and if you are six, then you will think out ways of getting to other people that were do are doing this or interested about this globally, because we are so close, like few seconds close from any community in this world that can help us. There are many, many learning communities um, online that you find experts that can help you with this. Um, and about uh, complex concepts uh, explained to kids, I can uh, tell you that uh, there is a huge amount of um, materials online. Uh, it's this computer science unplugged. It's really fun. So they only have uh, games that involve movement. So there is one thing about us humans that if we stay more than 20 minutes uh, in, uh, in one place without moving, our brain also starts to get in, cert in a certain mood. If you lift up now, if you are moving right now, your brain starts to work in a different way. And this is something that we really apply to teaching kids uh, about coding, is that we always uh, uh, do a break, like 30, after 30 minutes, we take a break, we move. We move, we go to drink water, we have a game. Uh, we always have games for them, moving games. It's very important because it makes your brain make the connections different, faster. It's proven scientifically. I don't have to um, give you all the details, just search on Google. It's working. So if you want, maybe you want to move now. I will count to three. And maybe you want to just stand up, just move a bit and I am sure that there is, you will get the results. Let's move all together in the same time. One, two, three. Up. Thank you. Let's, move, let's lift the hands. So everyone is smiling. I don't see any bored person at this moment. The change is on your faces. Thank you. Now you can sit down. And now, because you are so energized, I'm going to speak about the hard part, the hard work. <laughs> so the, uh, developing a community, building a community, and making people learn 
is not so easy or fun as it sounds. It's also a lot, a lot of work. And uh, to, to really appreciate the effort that the GS Heroes is putting today, let's give them a round of applause because they are doing a lot of work. <laughs> Alex, how many people are you in the community of organizers? 11. 11 people brought here 400 people? 450. 450. Imagine what they can do with 20 people. So join them or join any other community that you, uh, you would like to support. I can, I'm, it, there is a lot of work. I cannot explain you how much, but any help is needed. And any community um, can exist only with engagement and participation, active participation from members. So nothing of what you see today, of what you've learned yesterday or you will learn today, would be happening without active involvement from 11 people. Think about this. What, why are you here today? What are you learning from here? And what are you going to do to make sure that this is going to happen again or more in other communities? Because it's only a matter of, I want to join. I want to help. This is er everything that you have to do for now. You just have to raise your hand and say, I want to join, I want to help. Do this, please. It's a lot of hard work. Um, I would like to share a story from another community that I've been part of, and it was also a learning community. Uh, we've learned a lot from each other. Uh, it's Cluj Makers community. It's about a maker space that was missing from Cluj, and that's also a failure on my list uh, because it never worked. And I think we should also learn from things that don't work, not only from the successful recipes. Those are online, you can see them, international uh, movements. You can take the recipe, you can apply it to Cluj, it will work. Uh, but let's see what didn't work in our case, because makerspaces are expanding worldwide, and everyone is inter who's interested here in makers' movement, in making things. So we have, a, we have a few people, and uh, there are many, many more internationally, globally. Um, why this didn't work in Cluj? Uh, it was because of this stupid thing called holacracy. So I really believe in holacracy. I love it. I love uh, giving power to people to take decisions and having open organizations with open circles and only define the roles that people get and things will work magically. Well, not. It didn't work for us. It was a chaos. It was a mess. And you know why? Because people are just messy and they don't want to clean after they are using tools. That's so stupid. Like, we have 780 people in our community today in Cluj, and the space doesn't exist anymore after two years because of a stupid thing like doing the cleaning, you know? It was, it was not about paying, the, paying somebody to do the cleaning. It was the principle that we had from the beginning that we are doing everything by ourselves and it's a self-sustainable community. That was something that we started with. So if you start with the principle, you want to work with it. You want to preach what you, you want to put in practice what, you, what you've had as an ideal. And uh, for us, it was not, not working. Um, and it's a lesson about how human beings are having, can have very big ideals and goals, but they can get uh, very far from them because of stupid fights or egos or simple things like doing the cleaning. And there is another story that I've seen in a documentary about amateurs in space. These uh, Dutch people that wanted to build rockets to go to space and they've managed, and they, they, they did it in a garage. Uh, they 
really built this rocket that went uh, uh, very a lot further than 15 kilometers that they imagined at the beginning. It took them three years. And after three years, when they did it, they got into a fight, stupid fight on email about Chris taking the leader role. Oh no, you stupid shit, I'm not taking the leader role. And all the community was like, what the fuck is happening? Leaders were fighting on emails. Nobody knew what was happening. They just had a huge success. Everyone was speaking about them, like these guys are building rockets in their garage. And they just completely failed because of these stupid discussions. So don't, don't forget that big goal that, or the, the vision that brought you there. And don't get into the messy things. Just try to solve them or find a solution fast. Not, not, not let the, don't let the community die because of it. We let, them, uh, we let the community online for the moment, so you can join us on, on Facebook, Cluj Makers. And we hope that somebody else will do it one day and will have a fab lab or makerspace in Cluj. We have the recipe. The business model is working. Everything was working. It was proved. It's just our group, our uh, main leaders were not working as a, as a team. Uh, so, sometimes you just have to find other ways, um, and I'm sure somebody will find uh, one day. What, what are the results so far of teaching kids to code? I will come back to the questions from time to time. What do they know after the course? So, kids, um, some of them do just do websites for their uh, family business. Uh, some do the apps to order Pizza. They have these crazy ideas sometimes like repair, I want to repair the car by just putting the phone on the car and um, the app will tell me what is broken and it will uh, immediately contact the service so they can bring me the parts that are missing or send somebody to repair it. And sometimes they just want to do this uh, Flappy Birds game. So. It depends on the kids. The results are different uh, depending on what they are interested in. Well, one, one more last question. Uh, I'm sorry to, to interrupt, but we'll have to, one more question. to stop after this one. Um, trying again, what about offline experiences? It's essential that kids develop also in other areas than computer science. How do you ensure that? Sure. Uh, that computer science is just a tool, uh, programming or um, making robots is just an activity. It's, uh, if, if you love it, it's, it's really great because you'll become better and better, but it's not, it's not everything. So what, what we do with uh, games and working in teams is that we, we specially develop the social skills which kids don't really have anymore, so they are afraid of speaking to each other. And that is a problem that we really have to think about. Uh, they are staying like hours in front of the computer, uh, speaking to each other, but when you put them in front uh, of each other, they are uh, very... Um, hesitating about talking to each other, especially when you make them uh, teach from, uh, from a younger, uh, from a bigger kid to a younger kid, you, you try to make them teach each other, this is really not working and we have to develop the social skills. So this is something we really emphasize and it's before learning them to code, um, we, we teach them how to be kind to each other and how to work together and have fun together. Having fun is really important. And this is something um, that I would leave you with. Uh, also to the GS Heroes uh, organizers and the community, think about how you can make this experience fun and uh, even more collaborative for the next year. And thank you very much for doing this in Cluj. Thank you a lot.